In his interview, Taj Washington uh, gave some insight on Caleb Williams. I thought it was pretty interesting because I'm someone that needs to be won over by Caleb Williams still. I, I, I accept that that's where we're going. I accept that, that we're, we're taking him 1-1, and I don't hate it. The more I look into him, the more I'm actually loving what I'm seeing. Um, the fact that on third and fourth down, the entire time he's been at USC, he never threw a single interception, and that's clutch. That's something that Matt Eberflus talked about we need in a quarterback. So I'm seeing more and more that I like, but Taj Washington said, and I don't have it quoted here. I, this is just because you brought him up that I'm, I'm thinking of this. Um, he said, Caleb is that bubbly. He's social media. He's funny. He's personable. But when it comes down to, to game day, don't talk to him because he gets in the zone and he's not fun to be around. <laughs> like He's just down to business. And I kind of like that because that's one of the things that I've seen. He's on social media. He's on Twitter. He's, he's interacting. And I was like, okay, uh-oh. Here's someone that's too involved. He's too Hollywood. But if that's the way he is, that's kind of how I was. I, I wrestled and I played multiple sports. I wrestled. I played football. And when I wrestled, that's how it was. I was kind of a fun guy. I was, you know, just had a good time. But then when it came time to game day, like I was irritable. Like people wouldn't want to talk to me because I, I had to get myself in the zone. And I like competitors like that. I like guys that really can can focus in and and make it all about that, that it's all about the game. What are some of your thoughts on Caleb Williams? I haven't talked to you about Caleb Williams. We've just kind of gone over the fact that we've accepted that he's going to be QB1. It's what's happening 99%. Even if, even if the commanders offered a Herschel Walker type trade at this point, I don't think we would take it because Brian Poles has locked in and said, this is our quarterback. This is who we're going with. What are your thoughts on Caleb Williams? I don't know if uh, Abby Beardown Davis is still in the chat or not, but um, man, she knows me and her went back and forth on Facebook <laughs> quite a bit. Um, and, uh, you know, I have I came to that realization fairly early on. It's just it's just the situation at hand. You know, when you look at him as a prospect, he's an extremely good prospect. Um, I know there were a lot of narratives out there about him, whether it's, you know, him being involved on social media or whatnot. You know, part of that is this um, – this, youth generation too that's coming up they're all involved they're all on social media yeah. and as far as you know i know some things were said about his father his family life this and that they're all very involved too that's why you hear a lot of things about like um you know he puts more pressure on himself than anything else because even outside of the games his family kind of puts pressure on him to be a good good quarterback and and they're very involved with him too and when then when you look at the tape um not only is there a lot of quantity of it, he played for, you know, three, four years. And um, I know for two different teams, but uh, a lot of it is very impressive. He's going through, you know, what when I look at college tape specifically, and, and I try and look at quarterbacks, I try and just look at things that I think will translate to the NFL. And that's really my main concern. I know there's a lot of narratives, or, oh, well, his team – wasn't that good? They didn't beat this. They didn't beat that. I don't really follow any of that. None of that matters to me. At the end of the day, it is a team sport, right? So when I look at just the quarterback and the quarterback alone, um, his footwork's really nice. He's going through his read. So there's plenty of times where he's gone through his first read during his drop back. Um, he's in control on the field a lot. Like you mentioned, not throwing interceptions. Uh, there's a lot of stuff where, you know, where when he's rolling out, it's not this um, – run around without a game plan type of situation no he's running out he's running out of the pocket with a purpose he knows exactly what he's going to do he knows exactly where he's going to throw that ball and it's it's like clockwork and it's very impressive to see um his release time is very quick i mean he gets rid of the ball like that and that's what you like to see there's plenty of plays where he's even rolling out to the sideline and you think he's going out and just out of nowhere the ball's just gone and that translates to the nfl a lot and so I think he checks a ton of boxes. I think that's why you initially heard that narrative too, that like, hey, he is the best prospect since Andrew Luck. Yeah, there's there's not very many flaws in his game. Um, you can talk about how he passes up some early reads, but usually that winds up with a big play and he passes that read up because he's he knows he's got the bigger play. So like I said, it's very hard to sit there and pick him apart and, you know, at the end of the day, the, you know, moving on from Justin Fields, it's like the second we had pick one, I was just kind of like, uh-oh, like that, that's it. You're not going to sit here and outweigh potential in the NFL. I mean, at the end of the day, you look at, you know, we talked about draft value and things like that. What would a team give up for to trade up for pick one versus what Fields got traded for? 
right? So that lets you know exactly where the NFL stands for value-wise on, on what Fields has done versus what the potential of Caleb Williams is. And so, yeah, it became very clear to me that that's going to be probably, you know, the, the way that you're you're going to move forward. And um, luckily for us, he is such a good prospect because, you know, there's been guys before that you, you hear, you know, are going to go 1-1. I mean, even Trevor Lawrence last year, or not last year, even Trevor Lawrence in the Justin Fields draft, he's the only one left out of those quarterbacks that, that's starting on the team he's at. So, you know, um, it's a tough position to get right. It is. But you, but one thing's for sure is you have to get it right. And, you know, with the situation we're in, the way we acquired our pick, it's not even our pick. It's, it's house money. We've already won that trade. If you could top it off with Caleb Williams, that might be the cherry on top of the Sunday. And it might just put everything together. That position so impactful. Um, it makes everybody around them better makes the linemen better when you're able to get rid of the ball quick. You know, that puts a lot less sacks on their stat sheet. Um, they're happy because they want to get paid, so they don't want sacks on their stat sheet, you know. And same thing, you know, with the wide receivers and everything. And so a quarterback can really pull a whole team together. And the the expectation for Caleb is going to be huge. Um, like I said, I know they say he puts more pressure on himself. Well, the pressure is going to be huge. Uh, there's going to be a lot for him to live up to here. And – you know, you best believe, even though I, I came to that realization early on, moving forward, I'm still going to be pretty critical of his errors and his mistakes and whatnot. Yeah, we're going to be looking at a rookie quarterback in his rookie year. So, you know, you got to give some cushion and whatnot. And just like any other quarterback, I'll give him two, three years to proper, to properly sit there and have enough, um, you know, game flow out there to be able to study and make an accurate decision on what he is. But the expectation for him is to be that guy. So I am excited. You just hit a lot of topics with one nail. <laughs> you just you just nailed so many things, and there's so many things to digest in what you just said. Sorry, but man. I, I, I don't time. usually do live. That's why I edit my stuff. So <laughs> you're, you're good. I love it. I lo this is exactly what we want to go into. Um, I'm not giving him time. He just inherited one of the greatest teams for a number one overall pick to ever come into. On top of that, he's generational, right? My only concern with him, the more, here's the thing, the more I watch tape, the more I like him. The more I break down advanced metrics, the more I like him. I'm seeing why he's generational. In the beginning, I was very critical of him. Of anybody on Facebook, of anybody on YouTube, of anybody on Twitter, I was probably one of the most critical of him. And now I'm coming around. And part of it is because I had to accept the fact that Justin Fields is gone. Justin Fields, I was a Justin Fields homer. I was a Justin Fields fanboy. Whatever they want to call you, the Justin Fields Colt, I was the Justin Fields Colt. That was me, 100%. I saw Justin's advanced metrics. I saw it wasn't all on him. I was also very realistic of where Justin was lacking. He did have some flaws. And just like you said, at this position at the NFL level, this is the one position teams are willing to mortgage the future on. They're willing to leverage everything to get it right. And that's why it was a business decision. Business is business. I don't think a team is going to go south by giving Justin Fields a chance. In fact, I wholeheartedly believe he's going to beat out Russell Wilson, that he's going to not maybe to start the year, that this isn't a, pa a Steelers podcast, so it doesn't really matter, but I think he's going to win that job over. And we're going to get a fourth round pick instead of a sixth round pick because he's going to, he's going to play over 51% of the snaps. So he I like that. He has a career. He has a career in the NFL. He does. Yes, yeah, I'm not 100%. saying he doesn't. He and, definitely does. And I don't think it's a backup role. I think it's as a starter. But what it comes down to is Caleb Williams' potential. His potential is higher. He's he's a truly generational talent uh, that teams are willing to roll the dice on. And like you said, it was gifted to us because of what Carolina did, um, because of the position we were put in. We got this free gift that we didn't have to trade up. Like with Justin Fields, we traded up and we gave away a future first and a future fourth and another – third rounder that same year we gave up a lot to come up and get him not a not a crazy amount he was the fourth quarterback taken in that draft but coming from 20 to 9 it took it took a lot or 20 to 11 it took a lot to come up and get it so with that position you nailed it on the head this is a position that we have to take that risk on and now he's built the team up around him in a way why why would we why would we temper expectations you say, I'm going to give him two or three years. Why shouldn't that expectation be there year one when you saw guys like Andrew Luck who came into a very similar situation with a team that wasn't wasn't top of the league but also wasn't bottom of the barrel? They clearly tanked. If there was ever a tank year where it was proven that a team tanked, it was the 
it was the um, Peyton Manning tank year. They clearly tanked to get Andrew Luck. And then they had a great year with him. Why would we temper those expectations in Chicago? Um, so I think it truly just comes down to what your definition of expectations is because there's a lot okay. of them out there, right? So um, yeah. as far as Bears records, I fully expect him to be the best Bears rookie quarterback ever. And that's what, 2,300 yards, 11 touchdowns? I think that's no problem. As far as like throwing for 4,000 yards, I think he'll get there. I don't necessarily expect that the first year, though, right? And, okay. um, man, I, I, but there was a quarterback. I think Cam Newton did it his first year. I think he might have thrown for 4,000 yards his first year. So it's not an impossible task by any means. However, you know, my expectations are 3,000-plus yards, hopefully around that 3,500-yard range, you know, 20-plus touchdowns, and hopefully half the amount of interceptions or less. And um, And those aren't low expectations by any means. Right. So so those are Bears rookie record setting expectations. I'm just saying, you know, it takes these guys some time to develop in this league and get better. So I think he will be a great passer in this league. But I think his first year, he's, he's going to wow us just based off our history and what we know. But as far as like from an NFL point of view, I don't think he's going to go out there and necessarily, you know, throw for 4000 plus yards and, and do all these incredible things. Um it, that's a high, high bar to set. Um, is it possible? Sure, he does have that type of pedigree. Like you said, the talent is there on this team. However, as we discussed, you know, throughout the last 40 minutes of the show, the talent is there up front. It's not there in, in the depth, right? So you are just a couple injuries away from having some of that talent, you know, kind of not look that great again, right? So it all depends on how the season shakes up, and you never go – you know, without injuries. So you have to take that into consideration too. And yeah, um, I'm, like I said, I'm very excited to see the kid play in a Bears uniform, regular season, full speed game. I want to see how he processes it. But um, I do understand also that just like with any player, there is a learning curve. And I expect every year to progress and be better and better and better. So.